screen is visible to you, the first slide. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, this work uh, mainly stems out uh, from my tenure at the Swinburne uh, as a postdoc, which was funded by the Australian Renewable Energy Agency. Uh, so the uh, topics that I'm going to talk about today was not essentially the primary aim of that project. Uh, we wanted to achieve a framework to compute the power from wave, uh, wave energy converted arrays uh, in the Australian waters efficiently. Uh, but in that process, when we started going into deeper, uh, we, I had the chance to work with uh, Luke, who has, been, who has been instrumental throughout. And today I'm uh, going to talk about uh, the new, some new results from the code that we are developing to compute complex resonances in arrays. So firstly, I'll try to give some background on the complex resonances. And then I'll try to describe this uh, new method that I, we are trying to use uh, to compute them uh, for arrays. Then I'll try to apply this uh, method uh, for the cases with arrays, uh, with and without symmetry in their underlying geometrical configuration. So to start with, uh, we are dealing with uh, identical uh, uh, floating truncated cylinders uh, in an array. And uh, if we uh, think about the, the motion for the solutions for any of these uh, array members uh, due to the any, any initial condition that we can impose on any of the array member, uh, that is actually governed by our uh, standard radiation boundary value problem uh, uh, in the frequency domain. And then uh, uh, one of the way, actually there are many ways uh, to solve for the motions for the array members. Actually, there is a very nice review by Mike Malan, I think which I have referred in a couple of slides later. But uh, one of the ways is obviously you uh, write, uh, you solve the radiation boundary value problem uh, as a solution of the Laplace equation, uh, subjected to, to some standard boundary uh, conditions as most of you might be familiar with. And then we write down the equation of motion uh, for the motion in frequency domain. And then we do a Fourier transform uh, on the uh, frequency domain solution to obtain the time domain uh, solution uh, uh, from uh, from the frequency solution. Uh, so that is actually as long as you have a access to the uh, any standard boundary value problem solver uh, dealing with real frequencies, that is fairly a standard task. But there is another way of doing it, and that is uh, if it, uh, it is possible, if we can make an analytical extension of the radiation potential into the complex plane. And then it is possible to write down the solution as a sum over poles. Uh, so that actually stems out from the ideas in the singularity expansion method. So to adopt for the singularity expansion method, we need a boundary value solver uh, which can uh, deal with complex frequencies. And that is actually not so standard uh, practice while compared to doing it with the real frequencies. So. Uh, the poles that the singularity expansion method use are actually uh, part of the solution uh, from a uh, equation of certain equation of resonance, which has been shown here uh, in this uh, equation number three. Uh, so uh, for a heme only cylinders uh, inside this equation, we have the, the mass matrices, uh, the restraining force matrices, which are both diagonal. And we have the complex wave forcing matrices uh, given by this matrix uh, D. So this complex wave forcing matrix D is composed of our uh, added mass and the damping matrices, which are symmetric. And these are uh, related with the solution for the uh, radiation potential uh, in, the, in the frequency domain, which uh, fully takes into account all the mutual interactions uh, that occurs due to any prescribed motion that we can put in any of the array members. Uh, so, uh, uh, I think you can probably imagine uh, that uh, that the pre finding this uh, precise combination of the complex frequency omega m and the corresponding uh, right uh, eigenvector uh, Sorry, I think there was a problem. We, we can't hear you. Uh, 
Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Go ahead. Actually, uh, I just lost some little uh, problem with my wires. I think it will it will come eventually. So let me just try to fix that. I don't know what happened suddenly. Um, Probably you can just stop sharing and then share that again. Yes. Yes. Uh, let me share my screen once more. So. Is this screen is visible to you? Not in the full screen. Yeah, is it now? Yeah, fine. Thank you. Sorry for this interruption. So uh, yes, just uh, as, as I was talking about this, finding this uh, right combination for this complex omega m and the right uh, corresponding eigenvector, which is complex, is not an easy task. and uh, that is, uh, it potentially involves uh, a costly search in the targeted areas of the complex plane, and uh, that is where we want to come up with, uh, with a uh, method to do it efficiently. But before just going into the uh, method that we are using, let me try to uh, explain one key advantage of using the singularity expansion method. And to, to compare that, let us first uh, look at the final exact solution of the motions for the cylinders uh, that we obtain uh, from the Fourier transform uh, from the frequency domain to the time domain, as you can see in this uh, equation number five. So, uh, uh, but if you look at this, uh, that approximation that we can obtain from the ACM, we can see that it is actually some sum over poles. So clearly, uh, uh, in ACM, uh, we are able to write down the solution only using some uh, complex frequencies rather than uh, using large number of real frequencies that is required to carry out uh, this integration uh, in the exact solution with sufficient accuracy. So uh, if the uh, underlying array configuration has some uh, symmetry, then actually we can uh, invoke uh, some transformation uh, that is uh, uh, proposed in that paper by Olga Motetel uh, uh, to transform our equation matrix equations in a pure diagonal or the block diagonal forms. So here, the each member, uh, each diagonal member after the transformation can we can treat as a separate equation, and that uh, using that we can efficiently solve for the complex resonances. But uh, apart from computing this complex resonances, uh, this method also provides great insight into the modal motions of the arrays uh, in the into the array members but there are uh, two things first of all uh, this transformation is array specific and secondly uh, we uh, we don't know actually uh, how to apply this method uh, to cases with arrays when there are no more uh, symmetry in its, in its geometrical layout uh, so uh, uh, to adapt uh, to compute the complex resonances for any arrays uh, without uh, uh, exploiting in its in its uh, symmetry properties in its position, uh, we try to adopt a method from uh, one of the papers by Bennett and Malan. Uh, uh, so there, uh, the key to the method is actually uh, rewriting this equation of resonance involving a, a homotopy parameter h bar, and then. Uh, uh, the when the uh, homotopy parameter h bar is zero, we actually have a uh, we actually have a uh, trivial problem to solve uh, for the complex resonances, uh, and then uh, by uh, slowly varying this homotopy parameter h bar uh, towards one, which is the final uh, equation that we want to actually solve, it is possible to uh, uh, walk towards the final solution in certain number of homotopy steps. So, and for each of the homotopy steps, uh, for a given uh, homotopy value of the homotopy parameter, uh, we can uh, we can adopt uh, an uh, earlier method that we uh, uh, used a couple of years ago. Uh, so, uh, there we can use that uh, to uh, to find the solution to find the full solution of the complex eigenvalue problem. Uh, 
and then uh, the switching uh, uh, switching for the modes from one mode to another remote is actually fully solely determined uh, by the choice of the initial guess we make for the complex eigen vector that is um uh, h j uh, and there we take an, an vector orthogonal to the final solution of the eigen vector from going while going from one uh, mode to the another mode so in summary we got an in a inner iterative process to solve for the complex eigenvalue problem uh, for a given homotopy uh, parameter h bar and then uh, uh, we try to find the final solution in uh, in certain number of homotopy steps So the, the first simplest test case that you can adopt uh, to test that new uh, method based on homotopy is actually the single cylinder case. So if uh, we do not consider the complex wave forcing matrix D uh, into this uh, equation of resonance, we have to solve this uncoupled problem. And there uh, the solution for the complex uh, frequency is uh, on the uh, solely on the real axis uh, and uh, that uh, that actually the solution we get from the homotopy setting uh, the uh, the first at the first homotopy step uh, setting the h bar value as zero. But when we consider uh, the uh, the coupling matrix as uh, D, we can clearly see that the the pole has now shifted uh, to a new location inside the complex plane, and uh, the the solid uh, black markers so the progress in the solution in the various homotopy steps. So in this uh, case with the single cylinder as well as the remaining cases with the arrays, we always take three homotopy steps uh, represented, representing uh, uh, three homotopy parameters that is 0, 0 0.5 and 1. So for this case, uh, since the, the eigenvector is 1, uh, we can uh, use a standard Newton Raphson method uh, to find for the complex resonances using a cylinder code uh, capable with complex frequencies and this solution is actually shown in uh, this uh, little cross. So as you can see, both the methods uh, give a very good match with each other. Now uh, to start with the arrays, the simplest test case we can think of is obviously with uh, two cylinders uh, uh, and the, uh, the pictures on the top. So the modal position of the cylinders in two uh, modes uh, and the, the uh, pictures in the uh, bottom and left and right, uh, they shows uh, the uh, the progress in the homotopy solu uh, solution in three homotopy steps. Uh, and uh, now if we uh, try to uh, zoom in near the complex resonances, uh, you can see that the we are capturing the poles extremely well. And for this case, actually we can uh, adopt uh, the, the symmetry based method uh, that I showed a couple of slides earlier involving the transformation matrix G. So the solution from this method is shown here as a, a little cross in this slide, in these two figures. So now uh, uh, when we consider three cylinders in line, uh, that's a little more complicated uh, because now if we uh, look at the modal position of the cylinders, uh, where the cylinders uh, are actually colored uh, by the fine real part of the final solution of the eigenvectors, so you can see that compared to the previous case with the two cylinders, we have greater variety in the, in the eigenvectors in all the three modes, uh, omega 1, omega 2, and the omega 3. And uh, actually, we are not quite sure how to construct the T-matrix for this case. And there, uh, uh, we, uh, we saw here in this uh, bottom three pictures, the progress in the solution in three homotopy steps. And the, the, the shape of the, the contour, which is actually the, the uh, contour of the matrix of the equation of resonance in the uh, lower half of the complex plane clearly see that uh, the possibility of having multiple poles near the uh, uh, the pole valley in this uh, figures and clearly this is uh, verified when you zoomed in uh, near the uh, complex resonances we can see that we are able to capture all these three poles uh, uh, quite reliably using this uh, method so the lastly, uh, we conduct a time domain simulations uh, uh, you, you these three cylinders uh, case uh, where we provide some initial displacement on the cylinder in the middle. And then uh, we want to use the, uh, the full solution from the, this new method based on homotopy and fit that into the ACM uh, to see how reliable uh, the solutions are uh, we are achieving. 
So now when we compare this uh, time dependent motion uh, for all the three cylinders for this case, uh, the, the results uh, we find to be consistent with the uh, features that we generally see from the approximation based on the ACM. That is, uh, since we are neglecting the all the contributions from the branch cut, uh, the match is better as the uh, time progresses. So to uh, summarize, uh, 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 we, uh, we find that the proposed uh, method based on the homotopy seems uh, uh, seems uh, work seems seems to work for the array cases, and uh, it will be uh, interesting to uh, apply this uh, method uh, to other modes of motion, as well as for the cases when to investigate uh, the uh, the effect uh, of the uh, the effect of the perturbations on the cylinder locations on the resonances. So with that, I'd like to thank you, the Causewebs, uh, to giving me this opportunity to present our new results uh, from this code, and uh, let me know if you have any question and comments. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for the presentation, and uh, now we got uh, two minutes for some quick questions.